It is with equal parts admiration, excitement, and anticipation that I introduce the folks that are going to take you through the next hour. I say take you through the next hour rather than conduct a session because I honestly have no idea what to expect. There have been rumors, there have been secrets, there have been clandestine meetings. I think this is going to be awesome. So please do stick around for mentoring and networking across the miles during the COVID pandemic with Katie Schaefer and Robin Warner, two docs that are near and dear to the PCC family. I am going to turn things over. I'm going to stop sharing and they're going to start sharing. Greetings, greetings, PCC peeps. We are here tonight to talk about mentoring and networking across the miles. Hi, everyone. Good evening. We feel not sure about how we were offered this evening spot, but we decided to um, make this make the best of this. So you'll see there may be PCC colored cocktails to start this off. And we hope that you all have some kind of beverage alongside you for this little journey we're gonna take, so. Okay, um, the first thing you'll notice, like go back, go back for a second. The go first back, thing you'll notice back, okay. um, is the one disclaimer that I have to make is um, Robin and I have never, Dr. Warner, Robin, uh, we have never actually met one another. So this this talk is, is going to um, profoundly change the way you think about the way we communicate with one another. In fact, in, in just a few short weeks, we've given ourselves our own brand, like the familiar Bloom and Onion. <laughs> we, we are Bloom and Union, which are the names of our two practice practices. So anyway, take it away, Robin. All right, so first up, we thought we'd have a little fun, have some trivia, pretend we were on Church Street tonight, even though we're not. Um, so trivia question, which we'll answer at the end of the night is, what do Jennifer and Gray and Miley Cyrus have in common? So Google it, think about it. And what you'll see is the reveal will be at the end of tonight's talk, and you'll be impressed that Robin actually has some answers to this that are not related to this talk, which is sort of amazing. So, all right. So yeah, like Katie said, we have only met virtually, uh, gotten to know, know each other quite well in a very short period of time and have gotten quite a lot accomplished in that same short period of time. But we do hope that one day soon we can actually meet in person. We consider driving the four hours between us to, to do it sooner, but uh, you know, life gets in the way. So we're, we're hoping for uh, a, a in-person conference soon. And, and I think the idea is that um, part of the reason this, we, we are all here together is um, because we all wanna be hanging out. And um, the users conference is this amazing um, opportunity to do that. In fact, um, it's such a powerful thing. I actually came to the users conference before I was a PCC client. I don't know if there are any other previous clients who have done that, but what it speaks to is the fact that um, this, this tendency, this need to want to communicate with one another, to be around each other, to collaborate, um, and, and all of that is very, very powerful. And I think all of us are struggling with doing it this way, um, but we're trying to make it the best that we can, so. so. So our talk, mentoring and networking across the miles during COVID-19. Just to give you a little background, um, I am a, um, I'm a pediatrician in the Metro Detroit area in Birmingham, Michigan. We have um, six providers in my office and a few NPs that work with us part-time as compared to Robin who... I am a solo pediatrician in the Metro Cincinnati area in Northern Kentucky. My office is about 15 miles south of the border. Uh, we do have a, a group IPA here, which includes practices in Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky. But um, as far as my own individual practice, it is my own and I'm there by myself with only one employee. So very, very different backgrounds. All right. And so, and so be because, um, you know, because of the situation that Robin works in and um, a different scenario in the practice that I'm in 
Um, finding someone to be a mentor can can be really difficult. You know, you liken it to this this image here, which is finding a, a needle in a haystack. And I come from a practice where there are generational differences between um, the providers in the practice, and yet there does not seem to be um, any sort of mentoring uh, within the practice. Um, passing of a torch, you might liken it to, and and even in the Metro Detroit area where we have, um, there are probably, you know, a dozen or so pediatric practices within, you know, six or eight, um, you know, miles of my office, there is not a lot of collaboration among the pediatricians here. And that could be likened to the fact that there, there may be issues, you know, with competition, et cetera. Some of our practices are less than a mile from one another, but, um, but that leaves you sort of feeling uh, sort of alone. Um, you know, um, Robin, if you want to go to the next slide, sure. Uh, it 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 has this this feeling of of being alone on an island, sort of. You know, or it's it's lonely at the top, and you're looking around to 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 find out who can I ask these questions to, who, who's been here before me, um, should I trust my instinct, should I trust you know my husband, should I trust my mom, who who do I reach out to? And as it turns out, you know, there are people who have walked this walk um, either a year before you or 10 years before you or 20 years before you. And there is this, this wealth of opportunity to, to tap into those experiences um, with other people. So. so how is this important as a PCC client? Well, looking at numbers of PCC clients, Neither, uh, nearly 70% of the, the client groups have five or fewer providers and nearly 30% of us are solo providers. So that's a lot of providers in, in silos, so to speak, uh, without anybody within the practice to talk to. So that, that can be really tough and really isolating at times. To further expand on that, when you look at states who have PCC clients, 50% of the states, myself included, have fewer than three clients in each state. So even if you have a good, strong network, a local AAP chapter, you may have trouble finding a, another PCC client within your state. And I will say, just related to that, um, when, when we went live with PCC, we are one of the states that has uh, three practices um, although geographically we are about as far apart as you can be in the state. So we're, we're near to the east side of, um, of the state and both of these two practices are on the west side of the state. Um, but actually um, it was Scott Child who, who introduced me to a practice in, in Holland and um, they were actually a really great reference for us when we were making this, this change. Um, we became PCC clients about seven, I guess, eight months ago now. Um, and as you can imagine, the making the change um, from, from one EHR to another is this, is this giant, giant weight to move, giant boat to turn. And you, know, you need the buy-in of other people around you to make it happen. And so um, the, another PCC practice in Holland actually um, had my office manager and our biller out to their office to see how things work. They had been partner clients for many, many years, and then had been EHR clients for um, a few years um, you know, before us. Um, but that was an amazing opportunity and it helped me. Um, you know, I had some odd 40 employees that I had to drag through the mud to make this change happen. And it was much, much easier when I had people at the top who were willing to participate. And so, um, so if you don't know other PCC practices, um, you know, ask, ask the people at PCC where they are, who they are, um, because without, um, without Scott's help, I, I wouldn't have known, so. All right, so, like Katie said, all is not lost, because when PCC clients join the family, we tend to stick around for a while. In fact, the EHR, if nobody knows, is, is actually fairly young, not even a teenager yet, uh, turned 11, 12 this year. And nearly half of us have been here for that, uh, for, for at least half of the six years. So you've got some long-term, relatively long-term PCC EHR clients. And not only that, but you have even longer term PCC clients since partners been around for much longer. So nearly two thirds of us have been here for over five years. So with that experience comes a lot we can share with newer clients and 
12% have joined PCC just this year. So there are a lot of new clients out there and a lot that us older clients can share if we just are willing and want to reach out and have people reach out to us. And an amazing thing happened today, actually. I was um, scrolling through the SOPOM listserv and uh, a, cl um, a colleague of mine who I did residency with, uh, I think made her first post ever on SOPOM, as far as I can tell, and um, was asking which, um, which she's gonna open a solo practice. Should she go with PCC or OP? And I, <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever responded to a SOPM uh, email as fast as I did hers and um, jumped at the chance to tell her, um, you know, that there, there wasn't a decision to be made actually. And I actually invited her to this evening's talk. Um, so there may be new clients coming soon. All right. So despite these dis differences and these silos and these uh, challenging times with physically having someone local, thanks to meeting sites like Zoom, Google Hangouts, and so forth, it's easier than ever to network with other people. And I think in large part, we can, we can chalk that up to the pandemic. So all is not bad with the pandemic. We, Katie and I met each other, and that's how we met. So I think uh, there and are good you, things um, if you look at the, if, if the animation is, is, is playing in the slides, the, the version of the, I'll call it an iPhone um, in the corner that has just, you know, the, the text messages um, continually scrolling. That's what's happened to Robin and I over the past. I don't know what the date was. It's been, I don't know, maybe three weeks, four weeks. It hasn't been long. It hasn't been long. I think it was, I think it was basically when the, the news that, that the UC was going to be in May instead of July. Um, I'm sure all of you looked at that email with a furrowed brow wondering. So next happened? week. <laughs> Is that tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so whenever that was, um, that's actually when Robin and I met, so. So given the fact that we can now network and given the fact that many, many clients, both experienced and new, need mentors. How do you find the right one? Well, you find common ground, uh, you find common interest, and that's, and, and we didn't do that necessarily, but we, over talking and texting, we, we found out some things we had in common, which you'll see in the middle. Of course, the most important one being we're both PCC clients, but, uh, but some of the differences, they complement each other. And so we, we get along quite well. And, and I think, you know, re related to that, um, you know, we'll, we'll get into the scenario by which Robin and I came, came to this moment that we're in right now. Um, but it, it doesn't have to be something obvious. And, and you'll see that um, my, my initial reach out to Robin was entirely unrelated to, to anything that, that you're about to see. Um, but there was the suggestion, the, I'll, I'll use the word project. Um, and if anybody, well, most of y'all don't know me, but when someone says the word project to me, um, I, I am met with like equal parts excitement and my, my hand goes to my forehead like, oh gosh, what is it gonna be? Um, and so you, you, you just never know um, where you're going to find someone. And, and I will tell you that in my experience, um, communicating with people, reaching out, even when you're not sure, even when you don't know who they are, even when you don't know what they're going to say, I will tell you that um, the, the few things that I knew about Robin before all of this were um, that she knew something about um, vaccine refrigerators um, that she had an all Mac office and, um, and that her website had Legos on it. Um, I didn't otherwise know anything about her, um, but she was so kind as when I, when we were going live with PCC, she was so kind to um, respond on PCC talk when I was trying to transition my PC office into a Mac office. Uh, she gave me hope that it could be done and um, so I guess the message is to all of you out there that um, 
the, you know, sometimes you feel like you're sending an email out into darkness or you're throwing an idea out into darkness, but you never quite know who's there to catch that idea. And, and if the right person is, is there on the receiving end, really amazing things can happen. So what we're trying to encourage is, is more of this communication, more of this collaboration, um, because the possibilities are endless when the right people meet, so. Right, and uh, yeah, don't be afraid. Uh, you know, Katie, what I knew about her was she had uh, submitted a article for the SOPUM newsletter at Christoph Diazio's uh, suggestion about her attending uh, Chip and Suzanne Madden's course on how to start a practice in five easy steps. And from that course, she took some pointers, took them back to her practice before she was even a partner, instituted them and uh, met Bright Futures guidelines and made the practice some money. And then I also saw her her contributions on the COVID forum, her, her uh, song that she wrote and found, thought that we had a lot in common just by our interests. So when she reached out to me about vaccine fridges, we, we, we hit it off for a number of reasons. It was totally accidental. Yes. <laughs> All right, so moving on to mentorship, the three C's of mentorship. Role number one, consultant. Not dictator, consultant. So consultants should provide advice, or lead, but not chart the path necessarily, just provide guidelines and help problem solve, but not totally problem solved. Just again, get, get your mentee going in the right direction, make them think about what they need to do, but let them figure it out themselves. Second role, counselor. Again, you want to empower, but not do the job for your mentee. You want to help them figure out how to get things done in their situation and help them find their own way. And then finally, cheerleader. You want to support their thoughts, even though they might not be something you would do. You want to support them. If they fail, you want to support them. But at the same time, you want to let them realize why they failed so they can either learn from the, uh, their failure or move on and figure out how to do something better. And, and you know, to that point, it doesn't need to necessarily always be so formal as you know, assigning the title of mentor or mentee. Um, I had an amazing uh, moment at my office uh, yesterday, actually. There was a quiet moment where, which as you all know, that doesn't happen very often in, in a pediatric office. And there was this quiet moment. Um, one of the MAs who, um, for, for whatever reason, because of COVID, you know, she hasn't been in the office as much. She's a student. Um, she's very involved with her church. We work on opposite sides of the office and we had this moment where we the two of us were in the lab together and i said hey hey karina you know how are you what's what's going on and um she started talking to me about um she's enrolled in a community college and um what what her interests are um with regard to like what she wants to do in the future and we had this it wasn't it wasn't long it was very brief but we had this like short moment where I told her about this. Um, she's really interested in, in like uh, women's studies and human trafficking and, and those types of things. And, and there's a program here in Detroit um, called Alternatives for Girls, which is um, a nonprofit in Detroit um, that sort of speaks to those things. And so we didn't, we didn't have long, you know, we didn't have, it was like, you know, she's drawing up vaccines and I'm doing charts and we just had this little conversation. I, I sent her a link, uh, you know, to, to, this, um, to this group. I said, you know, you should volunteer there. There were internships available. She was struggling with what kind of um, what kind of degree to pursue, and so I guess I guess the point is sometimes you know you don't you don't realize that opportunity is there. You know this this sort of happened um, with Robin and I with an email that was sent. Um, this happened in my office um, just in a quiet moment, but you never quite know when those opportunities exist, and so to capitalize on them, even if they seem brief or meaningless, um, they aren't. You know so. So look around you and see, you know, it, it may be, you know, another doctor, it may be a medical assistant, maybe your office manager, you know, so. Right. Okay. And I'll let Katie take over this slide because she found these quotes. So. Yeah. So, um, so, so, you know, this is, this is a little bit more formal, but mentors need to be givers of energy, not takers. 
And, um, and, and I think, you know, about, you know, you see these words, good people or having the right good people around us. And what I've been learning about myself, you know, over time is that, you know, um, an, an idea, an idea is an idea, but it has to land in the right spot. You know, if you don't have the right receiver on the other end, you could come up with a million ideas. You, you could be excited about something, but, um, but if, if, if it doesn't land on the right ears or fall in, in, in the wrong inbox, um, it, it, it falls away, you know? And, and so, um, you know, so being, being receptive to other people's ideas, um, it, it doesn't have to be necessarily coaching, just sort of nudging along, um, you know, and, and, and breathing life in, into the ideas that someone might have, because without that, um, things, things fall flat. And so, you know, this, this idea of giving energy and not taking it is, is sort of what will help, you know, launch someone in, into an idea, which, um, which, which I will say, you know, had, had Robin, you know, suggested a project to somebody else, they might've been like, I'm too busy. I, I, what project, who are you? I don't know your name. And I immediately was like, what is she going to say? <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so. All right, so mentoring a millennial. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of our older colleagues, older than me, moan about this, but millennials are actually a very, very tech savvy, eager group. Uh, they want to learn. These are the, the ones, you know, with the, are overtaking all the, the skepticism of you can't open your own practice. Nobody opens their own practice. Independent practices are dead, but millennials are getting out there saying, I'm going to open my own practice. I'm going to do it my way. And this is how I'm going to do it. So they're eager. They want to learn. They want you to teach them. They want to want you to, to help them. And at the same time, they can teach us. So don't think that it's our way or the highway because they, they have a lot of skills that us older and even older than me doctors don't uh, there's people who don't have websites who haven't updated their websites in 20 years who 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 don't have a instagram account a facebook account so you know it, it's a give and take uh, i've learned a lot from katie over the past few weeks and and vice versa so it's not just us mentoring them it's them mentoring us and everyone wins that way I'm not sure I qualify as a millennial, <laughs> <laughs> um, but but you know the the amazing thing too is that um, you know it, th through this process um, that we're kind of walking you through, um, it's not it's not just millennials. Um, I'll, I don't know how old everybody is, but it's not just millennials who are opening practices. I mean, um, you know, I, Robin, you we discussed how old Robin was when she started her own practice. Um, I've met. Uh, a PC, a, a new PCC client on this journey who has just opened or is opening his own practice. Um, he doesn't look like he came right out of residency, but I don't know the answer to that. The doctor that I mentioned earlier um, who reached out on SOPUM actually graduated a year ahead of me in residency and I've been out of residency for 10 years and she's opening her own practice. So, so to be honest, you know, there are, um, you know, thanks, thanks to all of the encouragement um, from from all of the pediatric people that I've met in the last couple of years, this this idea of being an independent practice um, and 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 that you can do this is out there, and and it's not just millennials who are doing it. Um, oh. Who who I would consider to be younger than me, for example, um, it's people who are wanting control um, right. to, to bring their own ideas to the table. So and, and yeah, and I, I think in a lot of areas. You know, the, the first few years was nice to be employed, was nice to have that insurance, to have that, that backing from a larger institution. But then once the widget counting starts, people are just done. So they, they want independence. They want to they wanna drive their own ship. So, so, yeah, we need to be there. So millennials, maybe we shouldn't say millennials. Maybe we should say new to practice. Millennial and the, the new to practice. Yeah, because, because I will say that, um, you know, I've, um, I was an employed physician for, you know, the first eight or so years um, that I was out of residency. And, um, and so I don't consider myself necessarily to be a millennial because I'm like right at the cusp. But, um, but 
there is so much I have to learn. Um, I, I feel like I hit reset and, you know, everything that I, you know, maybe I have, you know, a handle on my clinical skills and things like that, but um, it's like the curtains on the stage opened and um, there's this whole world that I don't know, know anything about that I'm desperately trying to learn about. And, um, and, and I, you know, up until, well, we'll get to this, but up until I was a PCC client or I really became engaged with SOPA, I, I didn't have anyone to help me with that, so. So expectations of being a mentor mentee, and this can be, I'll just start at the bottom. It can be as formal or informal as you want. And so far, that, that, that's far Katie and I have been pretty informal. We're uh, texting back and forth throughout the day. We're doing phone calls at midnight. Uh, <laughs> so we're, we're pretty informal. Uh, how to meet virtually on the phone, um, in person, if you happen to be in the same area, but we've kind of circled back to that and understand that uh, in, within the PCC family, that's not always practical. Uh, what are you going to do with each meeting? And again, that gets back to formal versus informal. Does the mentor or mentee want to address something specific or just kind of shoot the breeze and go over what's happened the past week and, and problem solve based on things as they happen? Do you want to set, and it, it probably is a good idea if you want to do something specific to, to set a specific time each week and, and determine how much time you're going to spend. And then how often are you going to meet? Is it you know, is once a week too much for some people? It may be is, you know, in our case, several times a day, but uh, is once a month enough? Uh, so it's it's something that you have to agree to together. Yeah. Right, and, and, and one of the things, you know, that happened here was, was very informal, um, you know, but, but what happened over a, a fairly informal fun thing um, you know, developed, developed a relationship and developed a conversation about things that were entirely unrelated to that. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, this could be something like, um, like a, a book club or, um, you know, um, a beer swap it, to be in line with PCC's tendencies, um, you know, where, you know, you gather together, um, after work for an hour and chat about the challenges that you're having, um, be them clinical, be them in your family, um, whatever, whatever they may be, they may be a myriad of things, or you collaborate on a project, um, sort of like we did. So, so yeah, we've even done clinical, uh, on a, a Sunday night, Katie sent me a picture and said, Oh my gosh, I got this on the portal and I wouldn't have seen it till tomorrow if I hadn't have been logged into PCC. And the next day I had something and said, we don't see this in Kentucky. What do you think? So yeah, we're convinced that we need to get CME for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk you through what happened. So I was told by um, this, um, this PCC employee uh, by the name of Chip um, that there was, uh, oh, by the way, if you wanna talk about refrigerators, you should talk to Robin. Okay, who's Robin? She's the lady with an all Mac office. That's about all I knew. And, you know, in the advent of COVID, we were considering the thoughts of whether or not a COVID vaccine would come around. If it did, would we have, um, will we have enough room, you know, for, for the vaccines? And, um, and no, no fridge had been purchased on, on, on my watch since I've been in this practice. And so I, I sent, I didn't have Robin's email address. I actually sent her an email through PCC Talk, mm -hmm. which, I didn't even know how to do that exactly. <laughs> um, and, and she apologized um, when, when she responded, I think like eight hours later, you know, oh, sorry, I missed, sorry, I missed this. Um, you know, it was in PCC talk and it sometimes goes to my spam or I don't, I don't know, something to that effect. Correct yeah, me if junk mail. No, junk mail, yeah, every time. Yeah, yeah junk mail. And so, um, so this, this screenshot that you see here was the first day um, that I sent Robin an email about a refrigerator. You can see the subject of the, of the email and um, you can see the number of emails that were exchanged in, in I would nine say, eight, nine eight hours. hours. Yeah. Was that 12 or eight hours? Um, nine, yeah. Nine, yeah. yeah nine. So, um, so, so that's where this came from. I emailed Robin about a refrigerator 
And um, and here we here we are today. So yes, I hate to think about the number of text messages we have that <laughs> would take forever to count. All right. So in the meantime, now that we've got mentoring uh, handled. Power of networking. And at this point, Jan, if you're there, I'm going to stop sharing my screen momentarily and hand it over to Katie. You got it. Go for it. All right. All right. Okay. So you all have to forgive me because um, I tried to clean up my desktop and all of my browser windows so that I'm able to share this with you. But, um, and, and forgive us if there are technical challenges with, um, with what's about to happen. But when I emailed Robin about the vaccine fridge, she wrote back to me and said, oh, I'm so glad to hear from you. Um, I have this project that, um, that, I've, been work that I've been wanting to do and I, I wanted your opinion or I wanted you to be involved or I thought you might be interested. So, um, all right, let me see what I can do here. So here's the deal. So I'm gonna try to link my screen um, to, to YouTube and we're going to give this a moment and I ha have to my left hand side, I have the UC session open and someone like raise their hand if things are not going well or it doesn't seem right or it's delayed or there's a pause because part of this experience, it has to be right. And so if it doesn't work this way, we have an alternative way to do it. So I need you all to just raise your hand shout out, type, whatever it is you do, and, um, and let me know what you're seeing. So I'm gonna share my desktop, which is a scary thing because, can you see this? Yeah, I see it so far. Yes, you're good. All right. Rough, rough, folks. But I always do the last dance of the season. This year, somebody told me not. So I'm going to do my kind of dancing with a great partner. He's not only a terrific dancer, somebody who's taught me that there are people willing to stand up for other people no matter what it costs them. Somebody who's taught me about the kind of person I want to be. Sit down, Jake. <laughs> I hopped off a clean after TV with a dream in my office that Welcome to the land of peace, excess. Am I gonna fit in? Jumped on the bus, here I am for the first time. Look to my right and I see Chip, John, and Jan. This is all so crazy. <laughs> Everybody seems so famous. My tummy's turning and I'm feeling kind of starstruck. Too much pressure and I'm nervous. That's when the driver turned to alchemist and the beer tasting was on. And the beer tasting was on. And the beer tasting was on. So I put my hands up to teach in my class and my keyboard clicks away. Not in my head like that. Yeah. Writing down notes like that. Yeah. I got my hands up from teaching my class, hoping for a real life, you see. Yeah, it's a party with PCC. Yeah, it's a party with PCC. Get to the class, open up my PC. Everybody's looking at me now. Like, who's that chick that's rocking kicks? She's gotta be from out of town. So hard with the toddlers not around me. It's definitely not an OP party. Cause all I see are kings, most of the little. I guess I never got the memo. My head is spinning and it's kind of overflowing. Too much dashboard and I'm nervous. That's when Chip dropped a bar grab. And I be a sipping was on. And I be a sipping was on. And I be a sipping was on. So I put my hands up to teach in my class and I keep on clicks away. Not in my head like that. Yeah. Writing down notes like that. Yeah. I got my hands up from teaching my class and my keyboard 
Writing down notes like, yeah. I got my hands up to teach them my past, hoping for a real life, you see. Yeah, it's a party with PCC. Yeah, it's a party with PCC. You like hopping on the fly. Back to the big fast tonight. Something stops me every time. I saw my PCP and I feel alright. So I put my hands up to teach in my class and my keyboard picks away. Not in my head like it. Writing down notes like it. I got my hands up to teach in my class, hoping for a real life, you see. Yeah, it's a party with PCC. Yeah, it's a party with PCC. So I put my hands up to teach in my class and my keyboard clicks away. Not in my head like it. Writing down notes like it. I got my hands up to teach in my class, hoping for a real life, you see. Yeah, it's a party with PCC. pandemic. We couldn't have done it without you. Love Life Pediatrics wants to send out a big thank you to PCC and the We Care program, which has allowed us to provide excellent care to our patients in rural Maryland and West Virginia. We are so grateful that your program exists, and we can't say how much we appreciate you. We love you, PCC. 
Greetings, PCC family, and welcome from the greater Washington, D.C. area, specifically Rockville, Maryland. I'm Scott Wisman, and I'm standing in the brand new construction site of my brand new pediatric office, Wonder Years Pediatrics. And I am so excited and thrilled to be part of the PCC family. In fact, so excited that I've been carrying around my Vermont meat sticks, and while well, I have my pure maple candy straight from Vermont, when I get the shakes, takes the edge off, thanks to you guys. And I want to give a huge thank you to all of the PCC staff, John, Jay, and Chip, the leadership level, and with the specific people that I have been working with, Jeremy, Lauren, and Amy, and Allie, and all the rest of the PCC staff. It has been so wonderful to get my uh, kickstart off this past May. And unfortunately, since we're all not together, I'm giving you a big socially distant hug from where I am. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you next year, hopefully at the PMI conference in January, as well as next year at the uh, PCC user conference uh, next wow. year. Wow, 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 yeah. So good? I want more. Jeez. I don't know oh what's God. about to come next. So All right. <laughs> See, like pause or stop sharing or doing something. <laughs> Why you should you cleanse your gut? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that means better digestion, higher energy, easier weight right. management. Okay. But you don't need all of this. There we go. This guy has his Windex and a clean bowel. Okay. So um, all right. that's what you get for making your YouTube video public. <laughs> <laughs> Which I learned how to do today. So anyway, um, I just want you all to know, um, and I'm speaking, well, I'm speaking to everybody, but I'm speaking in particular to the PCC people who I hope a lot of you are watching. I have no idea who's watching this as far as I know, I'm alone in my office with beer, but, um, <laughs> but um, this, this came to be because Robin had an idea. Well, I don't know, Robin, we gotta like skip forward. Yeah, yeah we've got more slides. Yeah, we can get through them. It's more official. <laughs> Can you go to the slide with the text messages? Yeah. We can go backwards. All right. So Jan, can I, uh, let's see, here we go. Let's see. So I go backwards. Let's see. The text messages, which one? Uh, 25. 25. 25. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Let's see. Sorry, everyone. It. You're fine. Well, I, I'll, I'll there we give go. a little lead into this, but but basically, um, you know, so so this is actually um, a, a text string between between Robin and I, um, and and I just want you, I, I want everyone at PCC to realize that you know we we sent out an email, Robin sent out an email to say, hey, you know, we have this idea. Um, who, who wants, who wants in? And um, we had, I think a resounding like 28 replies that said, well, first, first we had to like, we had to ping Chris to say, hey, we need help. Who, who are yeah, the so, people? Yeah, so thank you, Chris Forleo for Chris. uploading 1300 emails. <laughs> so, so we keeping a out, secret. Yeah. And keeping a secret. So we sent out 1300 emails. I think we got 28 back. Um, ultimately we had, we had 10 like highly enthusiastic clients who, who sent us a video. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to, um, to Eliza's practice who did the whole video and to Patterson and Tedford who did, or who did the whole song and to Patterson and Tedford who did the whole song. Um, and I tend to set the bar a little high and said, everyone just do the whole song. Just send us the song. We'll figure it out. And, um, and Patterson and Tedford and, and, um, Eliza's practice both, both sent us, um, sent me the entire video of the whole song. So anyway, the, the point I want to make to you all is, is I don't think you realize how much you touch your clients and, and how much they, um, they appreciate you. And so this, this little text string that, that Robin put in here, um, you know, it speaks, speaks volumes to PCC and the power that you all have over your clients and, and what they can do. Um, so, um, 
so you know this this question um you know that i asked to robin so i, I think i'm in black and she's in blue but um correct you know, i said at what point in your career did you start having pediatrician friends across the country and um and what i was alluding to without saying it was you know I, it for me it happened when i became a pcc client and you know her answer was was the same well right when she became a pcc client um, you know, and, and when I think about it, you know, it was, it was at the big bash last year on a boat that I met Kristoff, um, who probably I realize now nudged me to write a soap article because he needed someone to write a soap article, but, um, it was on, a, it was on a boat, um, at the big bash that I met Kristoff Diasio, who's become a friend and a, a mentor to me actually. And, um, and then it was at, um, I think AAP in New Orleans that I met, um, Katrina Skinner, who has become a dear friend of mine. And these introductions were all made because of PCC. Um, and, and so, um, you know, one of the things that, that, um, that, I, that we, we said in this test exchange was I said, it's like a mini AAP chapter and, and it is, you know? Um, and and so, so this, this video is silly and it's weird and, and I don't know how well it came across on, on a screen share and we'll share the YouTube link with all of you, but, but, but it, is, it is basically um, representation of of pediatricians out there who who believe so much in you guys that they were willing to <laughs> um, rally their staff into doing these things. Uh, our, we did two run throughs and I, I, I had to let like everybody go. It was a Sunday afternoon. I was like, all right, y'all, this is enough is enough. But um, but but the point is, is that it is it's what you all instill in us that we want to give back that um, that you put on this amazing users conference and it hasn't been as great as it would have been if we all were seeing each other, but we wanted you to know, um, you know, how much we think you guys are so great. And, and you can see um, based on the participation that we aren't the only ones, so. Right, uh, you know, we, we set out to do this as a thank you to PCC, but I think we learned ourselves uh, just how valuable the power of networking is. Uh, we've learned so much about the other practices who participated. If anyone wants, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Patterson and Tedford wrote an excellent want ad for a pediatrician opportunity at their practice on Facebook. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. If I didn't have my own practice, I'd move to California. Uh, Scott Wisman, he, he gets the, the award. He's not even a, gone live yet and he participated. It's, it's just been fabulous seeing the, the love that everybody's had for PCC. So should we go back and finish our talk? Yeah, let's go back. Let's go. All back. right, let's go back. Anyway, I wanted to like in there was this oh. little shout out to Lynn. <laughs> um, Lynn did 6 a.m. conference calls with me. Okay. Um, she, she kicked me out of base camp, but she did 6 a.m. <laughs> conference calls. And I, I don't know um, of any other EHR vendor um, that's in the same time zone as you that would do a 6 a.m. conference call. So anyway, kudos to Lynn, so. Okay, so where are we now? SOPUM, other networking opportunities. I've been a SOPA member for 18 years, so learned a lot about the business side. Uh, also, what goes along with SOPUM is the PPMA, the practice managers division. So if there's any practice managers lifting, uh, listening, just uh, I think you have to be sponsored by a physician in your practice, but both listservs are very active and have their finger on the pulse of the AAP and practice management in general. 30 bucks is all it costs, that's $30 you can spend. And Katie, how long have you been a SOPA member? Oh, wow. I've been a SOPA member for, um, well, it will be three years this upcoming October-ish. AAP is the, the anniversary. Um, but it was at a talk um, uh, that I went to by uh, Chip and Suzanne about how to open your own practice which I never did, but, um, but you know, it was at the end of this lecture, it said, whatever you do, join SOPUM. And I had no idea what that meant. I didn't know what SOPUM was. It was some weird acronym. Um, I, I, I went to the booth at the exhibit hall and, um, and signed up and it's been, um, it's, been, it's been really awesome. You know, SOPUM has a barrage of emails that you have to kind of, of muddle through, but, um, but um, you know, I, uh, I've, I've met a lot of people. I've communicated with a lot of people. I've gotten ideas. I was talking to Robin today that without SOPA, you know, there are, are a lot of things that wouldn't otherwise come up. So 
Um, hopefully you all are SOPA members. I don't know, I feel like, can, is it like a requirement of being a PCC client that you are also a SOPA member? <laughs> Um, if it's not, it should be, that should be like in the contract that you sign that I, you will also pay $30 to the SOAP and listserv. But um, anyway, it's more than a listserv. Um, it, you know, that's, that's a big part of it, but um, they have um, a networking opportunity um, at the AAP conference um, where I met Ryan Wally, who um, at the, at this little party, who was just going to become a PCC client who's in Alabama. And uh, he and I found each other on the UC chat and, you know, had it not been for that, I would have never known who he was. So, um, so yay, SOPA. Yay, SOPA. All right, next, I'm gonna let you take over because you are, this is near and dear to your heart, Trina. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, so women in pediatrics, um, some of you, some of you are aware of, um, of this evolving um, group and, and sort of networking um, platform um, that is the, um, that is the, brainchild of Katrina Skinner, who is a pediatrician in Alabama. And, um, and so this is for women in pediatrics, but as Chip is representing in this photo, apparently it's not just for women. Um, we, we launched this idea um, at a silent disco in Miami after the PMI conference. Um, and we are in the throes of creating a virtual conference um, that will take place likely at the end of September or October. Um, it, that has a uh, list of speakers that is totally awesome. Um, Katrina, Katrina sent the list to me and I was, I, I, I read the list and I was like, this, this is amazing. So for, so for those of you, um, I know we're a little bit webinar out and, and all of that, but, um, but this is, this is coming. Um, this is going to be an awesome thing. We will likely have another awesome party, the PMI conference in Orlando in January. Should we all be able to gather together, gather together again? But um, so women in pediatrics, um, it's in its infancy, but I have the suspicion that it is gonna be um, really, really awesome. So, um, so keep an eye out for that. All right. Um, perfect lead in to the PMI conference in January in Orlando at Disney at the Beach and Yacht Club, which has the best pool on property. It will be the next scheduled in-person event for practice management. So if anybody has an itch to see people, sign up, sign up now so we can make this happen. If uh, you're anything like Katie and I, we are desperate to see people in person. So uh, not only that, but it's a really awesome pediatric practice management conference. Yes, I've, I've been to the PMI conference the last two years. Um, it's awesome. Um, tons of great content, uh, tons of great networking. Um, it's, if you have not been, you need to go. Um, it's, I, I actually booked um, for my front desk manager, uh, myself and one of my partners and our office manager to go in Orlando um, it, because there's, there's so much opportunity there. So please, please, please sign up for PMI. Um, if not just to, you know, to, rub elbows with someone. <laughs> um, there's, there's, there's a lot of great content um, at PMI. So, um, so Robin and I will be there. We'd love to, we'd love to see all of you since uh, it turns out we aren't seeing each other at the AAP conference, at least in person. Um, and, um, and this is our, our attempt at seeing each other for UC. So. All right. So we've covered that. Covered that. So for Longtime PCC users, just want to remind everybody that before the SOPM party, there was a NCE pizza and beer party that PCC sponsored. They encourage clients to join SOPM. They've sponsored SOPM events in the past. They often speak at SOPM events. They empower all of the clients to join local state and national chapters. We've had three SOPM chair people in the past who are PCC clients. And then of course the ultimate networking opportunity is the annual UC, which we're here right now. So cheers. 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 Cheers, right. cheers goes weird on <laughs> Oh yeah, you're, you're losing your glass there. That's an old English D if you can't tell. So 
So anyway, everybody, you know, this was um, this was just a way. This was sort of an excuse, but um, but we but we want you all to know that um, we have this amazing network within PCC to to communicate. Um, and um, when I told one of my colleagues that um, that we were having this talk and and I had met uh, Robin, you know, her 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 response was, "I want a mentor." You know, so um, so you you know, there everybody needs someone to look up to to kind of sound sound ideas off of, and um, there are like a lot of pediatricians lurking within PCC. So um, anyway, come out of your shell. <laughs> So some references for some of the material we had and some links to SOPUM, Women and Peds, the PMI conference in Orlando, how you can reach us, which will be in the slides. So back to the trivia answer. We now know what a fridge and a music video have in common. And this is how it all started. <laughs> But uh, Miley Cyrus and Jennifer Grey both appeared on Dancing with the Stars, and they both have famous fathers. Of course, we all know Miley Cyrus's father, but Jennifer Grey had a famous, uh, his fa uh, her father was a famous dancer. So that's what they have in common in addition to our music video. So with that, and, Jan. And also what, what, they, what they have in common, I just have to say, is, is the two of us, because um, it was... Um, we were, I don't know, texting or something at midnight one at night. At midnight, yes. <laughs> midnight, and Robin said to me, you know, I think we should talk about something about that line in Dirty Dancing where he says, you know, um, you know, I always do the last dance. And she had, she need not explain any further. And within six hours, you know, there was this lead in um, with, uh, you know, Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey in one of the best movies of all time. So, um, so what they have in common um, are, Robin and I. So. And so John, so that, you know, that's that picture. I actually printed that picture and um, it's hanging on a bulletin board in, in my office. So, um, so that's, you know, the likening of Utah to me. So, and Chip, I don't know what you're doing in a refrigerator. <laughs> well, you said you needed a fridge, Katie. So. Okay. Oh, I know. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> So anyway, so guys, so um, so thank you for for uh, being here, um, PCC. Thank you guys so so much. If you ever doubt um, your impact on the pediatricians that you serve, please um, watch this video. Um, the most amazing thing happened when I was driving into the office um, to do this. the The actual Miley Cyrus "Party in the USA" song played on some satellite radio and I had forgotten, I've listened to this song so many times that I had forgotten that there was an actual song <laughs> that was called Party in the USA. So um, so we think it's a party with PCC. Thank you guys. Um, the video might've been a little choppy. Um, Jan will share the link on YouTube um, so you can watch it. Um, and, and really for, for all of you um, PCC folk, this, this was for you. So thanks guys. Right, and in addition for clients out there, both office managers, physicians, MAs, VFC coordinators. If you want to set up a mentoring network, let's do it. Uh, this is fun. This is helpful. Uh, we can all learn from each other. So, so let's, let's all group together and, and help each other out. Oh my God, you guys. You, I, I, I don't even know where to go. I don't even know what to say. I, I'm especially grateful right now that I did not take anybody up on the several offers of beer that I had on my way to host this. Um, what, I, you didn't drink your homemade brew? I would be a blubbering fool and lose <laughs> that you got into that video. I, and, but I have completely forgotten everything that I was supposed to say in, in closing. So please just go to pcc.com slash UC2020. This was overwhelmingly wonderful. It, when you guys see all of the gratitude and the appreciation for you and for this in the chat, you're, you're, you've earned every word of it. This, this really was just completely unexpected and lovely. Thank you, thank you so much for this. Well, we love you guys, thank you so much. And Jan, I just want you to know, it's a, <laughs> brief, it's a brief breeze by in the video, but your photo is like a small photo of you with like a giant <laughs> Hamilton star. <laughs> Yeah. See, and I thought the giant pink balloons that spelled my name when I visited your office were going to be the biggest <laughs> I saw, but this blew it out of the water. 
And yes, uh, Alex did already find the, the link online so that it was shared early on. People have been enjoying it thoroughly uh, through, through the link. Um, there's, there's no way to top that. So I am, I am going to graciously and gratefully say thank you, thank you, thank you, you guys again. Cheers. <laughs> Let's get that mentoring yeah, network cheers. happening. Ooh, yes. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon, I hope. Thank you so All much. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks.